All right, so next we are going to hear from George Everett and uh, at, with Epinomy. Try something new. This is on iCloud, so this is a special presentation. Special. Ooh. Hey, record here. Oh, George. Yep. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I got to share the screen, too. All right. Hang on. Uh, good morning. I'm morning. George Everett. Uh, people call me Jordy, so I expect you to do the same. Um, and I am the managing director of Applied Relevance, a company that was founded in 20, 2005 um, and uh, had, has had my first exit in 2013 and uh, another venture that's not didn't we don't talk about it too much. And then this venture here, which is called Epinomy. And Epinomy, the name, I'm since you've asked, um, epi means above and nomos means order or the law. So it's uh it's Googleable because nobody else has epinomy. Uh it's on my license plate on my car. <laughs> so it's a name that I invented. Um and epinomy is a business operating system. Yeah. Thing. Does it even work? It's not focused. Got to click this. I don't have the mouse. Oh. <clears throat> so, so how many people here know what ERP is? For a pretty good number. Um, a lot of people don't. Enterprise Resource Planning, ERP, stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. Um, you've probably seen advertisements for it in airports uh, because it's marketed primarily to large organizations. Big companies, every Fortune 500 company has an ERP system. And it's usually from one of these people, SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, NetSuite, uh, Sage Accounting, and Forth. There's a whole bunch of them. These are sort of the, the top ones. Um, I like to call it dynamic enterprise resource planning uh, because I think it's a dumb name for what it is. It, it doesn't really help you to know what does it do? Does it really help you plan for your enterprise? Not really. I'd like to call it a business operating system. So a business operating system is a little more evocative. It tells you, you know, this is the underpinnings, the hard, the, the software on which to run any organization. So most organizations have um, some kind of, uh, is that doing it by itself? All right. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the problem that we're trying to solve is that many organizations, especially growing organizations, get to the point where their online, um, online services are just not adequate for their needs. So they'll have QuickBooks and they'll have Microsoft 365 or Google Sheets and they'll have a bunch of spreadsheets that, where they're tracking things. They may do their payroll on some, you know, either QuickBooks or some other system. And they don't really have the core business needs taken care of. So what is the, what are you doing? What are you actually doing? Are you, are you a manufacturer? Are you a service business? How are you tracking all of the core business functions? Oh, and by the way, everybody has similar functions at some level in the back office. So everybody needs accounting, CRM, um, website. So the problem is there's ERP, it's like uh, Microsoft Office, you have dissatisfied customers uh, who don't like their products. Um, there's so many spreadsheets and um, <clears throat> just sort of, it feels like it's put together and you're like, there's gotta be a better way. So our target audience is those customers, those, those companies who are growing, maybe they've gotten a big order, they're ready to, to go beyond their, their uh, thing and they're starting to look at ERP systems. It's not for somebody to go into get a whole new ERP system and replace SAP. So what is PIN? So it's ERP for everybody. One thing uh, you need to know is that uh, Epinomy is built on software called ERP Next. Um, it has modules for most business functions, which I'll go into a little bit later. 
uh, automate and consolidate data, strategic, tactical, and operational goals. So every business has those three things that they need to track, strategy, tactics, and operations. And then incremental tra digital transformation, which is what we provide. So uh, oh, wow. the as I said, is built on ERP Next, which is actually an open source ERP system that is, it's on version 14. It's been around for since uh, the late you know, 2008 or so. Um, and it's, uh, it has everything you need to run a business. So it has full financial accounting, QuickBooks, payroll, HR, has order management, uh, you know, HR and payroll, manufacturing, uh, inventory management, quality control, CRM, customer uh, resource management, project management like a Monday.com or a JIRA. It has a help desk built into it so you can provide customer support tickets. Um, it has asset management so you can manage all of your physical uh, digital or physical assets. And it has uh, a website and e-commerce filter built into it. So you can do instead of uh, something like um, Squarespace, you can do it on this platform. So what do we provide? Um, at Epinomy, since the software is free, uh, we don't really make much money off of selling licenses of software. We provide digital transformation services for organizations built on top of the Epinomy platform the ERP next platform. So when you're ready, when you're at the stage where you want to automate all of your processes, we are experts on the platform, uh, but the platform is really not the, the idea. The idea is how do your processes go? How do we automate and model the processes that make your business go faster? Um, uh, you know, you have to do less, you know, more with fewer people nowadays. Mm -hmm. So if you can automate things that would take somebody, you know, uh, a day with a spreadsheet, if you can make that a push button uh, ordeal, you've now saved a headcount, right? Or you can take that headcount and put them on doing something that humans are better. So how do we make money? Uh, as I said, I mentioned all of that. And that's it. So I think we're, did we get the six minutes? Okay. We <laughs> need a few things for time and to broaden it out a little bit. Uh, I mentioned that we uh, focus, so. Uh, thank you for the presentation, it's really interesting. I, I was trying to figure out what, what is the differentiator. There are a lot of you guys in the market, mm -hmm. like Salesforce, and so maybe you have something in terms of your what is the good? I believe you're not technical language. Oh, I am a technical guy. You are? Oh, yeah. So, you want to tell us so it's a, what is under the hood? Under the hood, it's it's very boring, yeah. <laughs> which is nice. So, you can find resources to deal with. Again, it's open source. It's based on uh, Python at the back end. Uh, at MariaDB, which is a, a, a MySQL database. Um, and then it just uses and Redis for a cache management system. So, it is scalable vertically, horizontally. Um, you can run it in the cloud, you can run it on prem. We have some customers who really like the fact that you can run it on prem because uh, their schools are using it for training, logistics training. So it, basically it becomes the ERP system that is free to them to use, runs on their machines, and it has the bonus of not having to go out onto the internet, right? <laughs> is there a chance to go to the one more slide back? Just what do you do? What is your revenue model? Oh, a revenue model? Um, <laughs> just one from the last. Yeah, yeah. So, um, a revenue model, professional <laughs> services fees. So, we have what's called a quick start where we come in and we, we analyze all of your business processes and we model them into the software, into objects in the software. You say, how does this, how, what can we use that's out of the box? And what do we need to customize? Because it's a very customizable framework. So if you have something you need that is special, um, we try to say, okay, what, what does the platform that knows about how to do transactions, that knows how to do a full accounting system, a full stock management system, but maybe you need, we, for example, one of our uh, customers is a 
uh, an insurance company that does insurance quotes. So they have a problem of a whole bunch of different um, data sources. They need to model those, make them into a common data source, and then send them <clears> on <throat> to providers to get quotes from them and then provide um, uh, the service to their corporate clients. You know, that we're going to buy uh, insurance. So you can model all of that in a pin. And also, then you get CRM for free, you get project management for free, you get all of the things, all of the modules that are associated with it. Are these components add-ons? So, or, or is it all proprietary under your software? I mean, do you have to go and plug in um, and connect to all of these different platforms, or is it? It is modular. Um, everything is included. It, they call it a batteries included platform. So that means uh, every single module is included for free, whether you use it or not. So, um, and you don't have to obviously install them all and make them visible to every user. So you don't have to have your HR system. You don't have to have an HR system if you don't want to you just sort of hide that. Um, but it's it's kind of the opposite of most ERP uh, modular systems in that you know you pay a per user fee per module. So you know you can get up to a thousand dollars a month quickly, moderately sized. Whereas this is the software itself is free. We charge for our services, which are you know they're not cheap <laughs> because we are um, you know professionals. We do this, but it's you know, it, you get somebody who's an expertise on the platform, plus you get the platform. If you go away, then it's easy to find people who know Python and, and that stuff. Those skills are available. It's not like it's a well garden like dynamics or SAP. Yeah, phenomenal product. Um, I'm familiar with Talon, but did you model it? I mean, no, this was this actually came from India. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an it's an Indian software. The guy who founded it he worked for his dad's um, furniture manufacturer, and he just got out of the university. He's like, I'm going to build this product. It's very popular in the EMEA region, you know, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Um, but and U.S. presence is I, I see it as a blue, you know, blue ocean opportunity for me. <laughs> Because, you know, I have a background in this stuff and I, you know, I'm able to take it and provide the kind of support that's difficult for an Indian company to support. But it's, it's you know, an American accent on the product. Yeah, I had an intern for Talent for a little while and this is very similar. And of course, their clients are like Home Depot and Leveno and they won't do something like this for a small mom and pop. So this is a phenomenal product. Thank you so much for presenting it to us. Is this something like myself as a small business growing? Is this something that I can use immediately, say from the accounting perspective? And then as my company grows, as my products grow, then you can branch into these other modules and absolutely just continue to grow with this. Yes. Yeah, that's it, the whole is idea. The interface like a QuickBooks. Is it going to be something? I mean, I, you didn't show me slides of the actual interface with the actual screenshot. I can so. log on if you want. It's, okay. um, we have a demo site called Solar Panel, and so LR. Um, and, and we're kind of setting that up. So, you know, if you get there and you sign in, uh, contact me and, and we can give you uh, real access to it. But it's essentially, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an attractive interface, but it's not mind blowing. It's not crazy. Um, and and it's, I like it better than QuickBooks. It's more modern than QuickBooks. It's all based on Bootstrap, which you're, if you're familiar with that, it's a, very common is it's Twitter's user interface design language. So it kind of looks like Twitter <laughs> in, in certain ways. Can things be transferred into that? Can all your books from over here be transferred into this and get yep. there safely? Yeah, well, I mean, that is uh, that is part of what we do, right? Okay. Is That's where the services come in. Yeah, that's, that's where the services region. come in. Yeah, so there is some level of import uh, built into the product, um, but you can get into the weeds very quickly. So yes, it, you know, any kind of an ETL extract, transform, load kind of a process, you'll probably want to get help just because there's so many ways to do it. And um, no, there's so know. many, yeah, there's so many things. <laughs> but once you get it in there, you know, then you can track everything as a full double entry accounting system. 
need to invoices, sales orders, purchase orders, um, quotes, uh, estimates, and then that goes into your manufacturing. Right. So how does it compare in cost to QuickBooks for you to do an implementation for the startup, right? A um, quick start, if you will. Yeah, so a quick start, um, we can talk about that, but um, it, it depends a lot on which one, what you want, but uh, our sort of standard quick start is $5,000. And that has a well-known project. Uh, you know, it's about a week's worth of, of work. Um, and that'll get you up and start. How are you finding your clients? Are you doing a word of mouth or are you aggressively seeking them out? Because you're competing with a lot of really big companies. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are doing this kind of thing uh, right now when we are just starting out. I mean, I literally found ERP Next in um, March of this year, and we implemented it for a customer, and we implemented it for ourselves, and learned how it worked. And, and we're like, why isn't everybody using this? Because it's so good. It's surprisingly good. But, but it doesn't have billions of dollars of marketing like Microsoft and Oracle and SAP do. So no, and, and those people don't really market to the, the growing organizations. But it's, you know, it's for it's really for a growing organization who is at the point, you know, five to fifty million dollar kind of level where they haven't really gotten a, a full ERP system yet, and they're able to do it from the ground up <laughs> rather than having to replace an existing ERP system, which that is fraught with peril. And that is a long process, if anything. If you go from Dynamics to SAP, you go from Dynamics to um, Next, it's going to be a year, right, if you have any kind of transactions. So I, I, I have a ton of questions, but I'll just start out with the basic. So why are you doing this? Why Personally, am I why doing this? Why are you doing this? And where do you see yourself? You know, what, what's your goal? Well, I, you know, that's always a fraught question, but um, I see myself uh, having an exit in five years. I'm getting up there. <laughs> so uh, the, the goal is to basically grow this into a, a growing concern. And, um, you know, since we don't own the IP, the value is in the clients that get and the, 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 the platforms that we, we, we grow customers. So that's, that's the, the tactic. Right. right. The strategy is what we're doing now. We're always opening open strategies on marketing. A lot of our focus is on manufacturing, growing manufacturers, because that's what the state of Florida cares about right now. They want to be the number 10 economy in the world, built on top of uh, one trade, manufacturing, and Tourism. Well, no, not tourism. They want to, you know, they figure they they figure they have that locked down. So that's our target market, but we're also catching a lot of other fish in that net mm -hmm. uh, interests. So is this a better mousetrap at a less expensive price point? Uh, I'm not saying is it better. It's similar. I'm saying it's similar, right? But it's a better price point for somebody Way who's going to start out. Point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, you know, if you go in, well, you can get into, like, say, QuickBooks, right? You use that as an example. QuickBooks is, what, 30 bucks a month yeah. for, a, for a small entrepreneur? We're not going to touch that, right? <coughs> right? Because of the upfront. Or you can do it yourself. But there's nothing stopping you from going to frappe.com and uh, hooking up and standing up an ERP Next instance and branding it yourself and making your own opinion, yeah. right? <laughs> There's, there's nothing that stops you from doing that. They don't stop you. They are militant about the open space. So that means, you know, they're not going to, they're never going to sell it. And you can always fork it. We're counting on the fact that we can fork it and create our own if something goes horribly wrong there. We still have access. And that's the same model that Red Hat has and that B has and a bunch of open source uh, software. So we, we're the Red Hat model, if you're familiar with. Just jump to the next slide. I think you have some info in there. This one? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's usually the last question. So I'm prepared for that. So um, I've been involved in One Million Cups for quite a few years. And 
typically these presentations, we consider them to be business presentations. Mm -hmm. And in a business presentation, we expect to see, you know, just an overall, um, you know, one-stop shop view of the whole, the business, a, a synopsis of the business. Mm -hmm. so that includes things like a competitive uh, survey, right? Mm -hmm. You know, show, show us your, your quadrant or whatever uh, you use to, so that we understand that you you understand what your competition is and how you relate uh, and, and how you position how you're positioned vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, your competition mm -hmm. uh, that would have eliminated a lot of the questions that we've had so far okay. um and we have a big small canvas but that's not what you're asking right right and well I, I i suspect that that is faulty as well because yeah. you know that's what everybody uses um the the other thing too is uh, you, only in the questions did we find out that you have revenues. I guess you you had a beta ish, ish yeah. right? <laughs> so you, you so um, so um, we're interested we're, more. I'm going to say we're pre revenue at this point. Uh -huh. We're bootstrapped, so um, you know we're we're looking for partners and basically cash flow to keep this thing going. Okay. Um, but so this I, is not this this venue. I don't think is really the right one to get that kind of stuff. Right. But um, you know, if you know somebody who's interested in partnering with this on this project, that's the resources that they interest. Okay. For, yeah, for and you know, we're we're interested in knowing what the, you know your Tam Tom song, you know, Sam Tom song is, and you know, what your target market is more specifically because we you never know who's in the room. Mm -hmm. who can help you, you know, hey, I know somebody who's right. just like that. Right? Yeah, I have another, I have a sales demo sure. deck, and I also have a pitch deck. So mm -hmm. this isn't pitch deck, this is cups. Right. Deck. Pitch deck has a lot of that stuff, and it is in progress, but you're, you're quite a bit. Yeah, you know. And that's for we, more pitching to yeah. investor types. We can, we can talk about that. Yeah. Small suggestion regarding the Text that there is a bunch of uh, open source React mm -hmm. and Citrium because Python is a little bit slower. Well, well we, I've done React for years. Yeah. Um, and that's just what this is on Python. Yeah. Python also runs the biggest AI in the world. And, you know, you AI uh, not really. I'm, uh, I, I'm familiar with the whole AI space, so I'm not going to make any claims to any AI. I'm not making any block claim, blockchain or AI or InfoSec claims here, which are the big three popular, you know, things. That's, um, we can integrate if you have a blockchain or something. We we're talking to somebody and in integrating with a, a, a supply chain integrity module. Um, and they use the blockchain behind the scenes. They don't even call it blockchain because it's sitting in the mouth, but um, we don't have, I'm sure we're out of time. Uh, other than, is there anything else that we as a community can do? Um, no, this has been very helpful. Thank you very much. Okay, great. And if you do have more questions, I am sure that Jordy is going to stick around. I am. Next, we are going to hear from Raymond Menon from Formulate to talk about startup. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? Good. Great, yeah. great. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna talk about one of the events that I'm super passionate about. Uh, I'll just introduce myself real quick and then I'll talk about the event as well. Uh, my name is Rajiv Menon. I'm the CEO and founder of Informulate. That's what I've been doing for the last decade and a half plus. Uh, we're a software consulting company, uh, but our differentiator is that we do innovation consulting as well. Uh, we work with large clients like Stanford University, uh, Orlando Magic, uh, and small and mid -sized. What we do really well is um, some of the stuff that Rupert was asking a minute ago is helping you think about what is it that you're doing different? What is your business model? What's your value proposition? Who is that with your customer? So asking those questions really helped us to uh, design solutions, software solutions that actually solve the business problem rather than a software solution that people. So um, that's been our differentiator. And because of that, we really got passionate with innovation methodology over the last, I want to say, eight years or so. That's when I also started getting really involved as a community uh, with Lean Startup Orlando, which is a meetup that we organize every month. I invite you guys to come check it out as well. 
name of it? Lean Startup. Okay. Orlando. Yep. Uh, and I have some cards here on healthcare out in a minute. <coughs> Lean Startup Orlando is a monthly innovation meetup that uh, I sponsor and formulate sponsors. And uh, Startup Weekend is the other one. So let me talk about that. That's the reason we're here. So the problem that Startup Weekend solves <laughs> is there's a lot of people with great ideas. And there's a lot of folks who think that, you know, I can't share my idea because somebody's going to steal my idea. And that is one of the most detrimental things for entrepreneurs, for the idea itself, or for any kind of traction that you want to make on it. The more you sit in your basement working on your idea without telling anybody else about it, the less chance you have. And the longer you go like that, the less chance you have of ever doing anything with it. The world is moving so fast. Disruption is going so fast. Technology can be invented and built so fast. Like uh, Jordi was talking about, we can take this ERP solution that's already out there and start implementing it. No one needs to build all these big things from scratch anymore. You can take components of things that work and put together your minimum viable product and take it to market and let the customer tell you what they like and don't like. Let's not assume for the customer, right? So those are the problems that entrepreneurs have. Those are the problems that leaders who want to build companies have. And it's the same problem whether you're a startup founder or if you're a product manager at a large company. You have the exact same problem. You're trying to launch a new product out into the market and you don't really know how much work you should put into it before you launch it. You have two choices. You might go into analysis paralysis mode and just spend a lot of time spinning your wheels there. Or you might go build something that is massive and takes a lot of money, millions of dollars spent in a, within a large organization and then you find out nobody wants to use it. So that's the problem. So what are the first steps to innovation? That's what a startup weekend does. So what is the solution? I don't know how many people here have heard of startup weekend before. Anybody heard of startup weekend? All right, so we got well, close to half the room. So for the rest of you, startup weekend is a whole weekend event. And this was actually started originally, I want to say 15, 16 years ago by a nonprofit company called UpGlobal. It has since been taken over by Techstars, the <laughs> global accelerator. And we here in Orlando, I'm one of the organizers for Startup Weekend. Uh, we put it on once a year, which actually next year, we're going to have twice a year. Uh, so it's all over the United States? It's all over the world. Oh, world. Yeah, 150, 150 cities. We'll have a, a, um, a metrics slide coming up shortly. So you start on Friday night. A bunch of people, strangers who never met each other. Get your ideas. Uh, much like we did today, but you have one minute to pitch. You talk about the customer you're trying to help, the problem you're trying to solve, and the solution that you have for their uh, problem. And of course, you want to give yourself a name. So the four elements, that's it. One minute pitch, and then we form teams. And uh, we work the whole weekend. Once the teams are formed, it's completely democratic. You work on what team you like. And if your idea doesn't get picked, you work on someone else's team. You get 99% of the value, whether you work on a team or leader. So the 1% shouldn't make, affect your decision on whether you want to stay for the weekend because one of the great examples we have is Stacks. How many people have heard of Fat Merchant or Stacks? All right, so that's, that's one of our most celebrated <laughs> startup, that's one of our most celebrated startup stories in Orlando is Stacks. And um, Sunira Madani, who's the CEO of Stacks, who is the CEO of Stacks, pitched her idea at a startup weekend. And guess what happened? Crickets. Nothing happened. Absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> because nobody picked her idea. All right. So she was working on this. She had this great idea. She thought it's going to change the world. And she pitched the idea. Nobody wanted to be on her team because nobody got the idea. It was in financial. It was fintech. Right. And nobody worked on her idea. But she went through the whole experience. She worked the weekend. She learned the tools. She learned how to go after customers. She learned how to be, uh, how to maximize her time. Because remember, you have to do all of this in one weekend. And then she came out of it. She used that experience to go build her own team. And she went to an accelerator, Starter Studio, which is right here for you folks that are on startups and want to get some help. Starter Studio is a great place to start. She found her co-founder there. She met other people there. And then her idea took off. And she was one of our early uh, presenters. She was one of the early ones, yeah. And then 2017, we had Lee Cake. Lee Stick, uh was actually here at One Million Cups. Yep. And uh, he heard about Startup Weekend. Uh, what's his name? Taj. Taj. Taj Adab actually was here as one of you guys sitting in this chair. And 
we talked about one million. Uh, we talked about Startup Weekend. He picked up one of these cards, and right that day, it was actually a Wednesday, right before Startup Weekend, uh, which is well, Startup Weekend is actually the weekend after this one coming up. He took the card. He pitched. He wasn't sure he wanted to go. He was like, all right, let's just go. He went. He had the biggest team. He had seven or eight people on his team. His idea came first in Startup Weekend Orlando. And then at the time, 2017, we had folks, uh, we had a competition called the Startup Global Challenge. And that was at the national level across the whole United States. It was at the regional level, the whole Americas, and the global level. Taj and his team won all three. He came in number one in the world across 150 cities. That was a lot of traction. Since then, he's raised $15 million. So I have a question yeah. about that. Might be kind of, uh, that's stupid, but I I never heard of Startup Weekend. So when once you pitch, let's say this guy, he had a team. Yes. So, so is this team like... He didn't have a team when he came in the door. No, but the, after the weekend. After the weekend. So did they leave together and build that? Yes. Startup? Yes. Oh. Yeah. In fact, I'm not very happy with it because he stole one of my employees. Who was all <laughs> <laughs> but we're still friends. Uh, but yeah, he actually found a team there. One of my employees joined his team because I invite my employees to go experience it because the energy and the learning you can have that weekend is unbelievable. So I encourage everybody to go be a part of it, even if you don't have an idea that you want to pitch. So he found his team there. They made tremendous traction. Go ahead, Vijay. Yep. I found a team last year in... Uh... Uh, started week in Orlando, and uh, uh, we are working now. And uh, I invested in the startup. I also built their app, and the app is launched. And they are actively working in the market. And uh, the name is Spot Fitness. Yep. So I found Adam of Spot Fitness in Startup Week in Orlando last year. So concrete. <laughs> it is. It's very real, and it's unbelievable because my first experience with Startup Weekend was I want to say ten years ago was my first experience. I heard about it, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." I I was already running my own business at the time, and we were six years into our business, so I wasn't a new entrepreneur from that point of view. Uh, but the learnings that you get, I mean, just the mental, it just cuts. It's like the have you heard of the Gordian knot? It's like that, like Alexander, there's a story of the Gordian knot, which is uh, the person who's going to rule Asia has to unravel this Gordian knot, which is an extremely tangled knot. What did Alexander do? He's like, I'm going to figure it out. He just cut it with a sword. And he's like, I'm going through to Asia. <laughs> so it's that kind of experience which just changes your mindset completely. You're thinking we have to do all of this product building and quality and legal stuff and uh, accounting and operations and all of this stuff. But really, what Startup Weekend focuses you on is the customer. And if, you're, if you truly understand what your customer needs, you can make it happen. And so the full focus of the Weekend, I'll get you in a minute, uh, is to focus on uh, what is the customer's need. And so what happens on the Weekend? Let's talk about that for a second before I go back to Glyph. How much is it? What's that? It's free. free? Uh, it's not free, no. Oh, it's on a website. Yeah, uh, it's uh, $99. And I'll tell you in a minute what. Uh, can you hold on a sec question for one second? Because I think someone's a question that I have three slides. I'll just get through it real quick. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's a 54 hour weekend. You start on Friday night, you pitch ideas, you form teams, and then you work the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, right? So Saturday is all about you defining your business model. The morning, you define your business model and your value proposition. Who is your customer? And then the rest of the weekend, you spend talking to those customers. So go out and meet, force people to hit 50 to 100 customers in that weekend and teams do it regularly more than half the teams hit that target of 50 to 100 customers on the weekend and these are b2b sales too okay so don't get me started on b2b you can make it happen if you have to make it happen but that's what sunil learned she learned how to call people and get them to answer her phone calls or linkedin messages or whatever it is she was able to connect with these people over that weekend and she learned how to do that and that helped her with the business uh not only that you'll have mentors there are four sets Rupert's going to be a mentor and we have other mentors who are going to be there uh, to yeah uh, to help you over the weekend in four sessions. So Saturday morning, we're going to have mentors focus on building your business model and value proposition. Saturday afternoon, we're going to have mentors helping you with your customer discovery and what questions should you ask and how should you ask them. Sunday morning, we have people who will help you with taking those and building your pitch deck. Uh, Saturday, Sunday afternoon, we'll have the final pitches where you're ready to present what you've learned and the validation that you got. So the test is the, the teams are judged on three criteria. 
One is what is your business model? Can you monetize and all of the questions that you've been asking? Uh, two is the amount of traction you got, like how much progress can you show that you are actually capable of executing on this idea, right? So people who aren't able to make traction are not gonna do well. You have to actually show progress in the terms of what does your product look like? Let's see a clicking prototype or clickable prototype of what it looks like. So give, give the judges a sense of what you can achieve. Third is actual validation. How many customers did you actually sell? And here's the kicker. Every single startup weekend that I've ever been to, whether I led it or someone else led it, there's always multiple teams that generate revenue. That's unbelievable. That weekend. In one weekend with an idea that just, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Uh, so there's, uh, there's, oh, wait, I have a five minute limit, don't I? Yeah, six, six minutes. Six minutes. Okay. I, I don't know what I'm doing on time, Eric. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Way over. We're, we're <laughs> All right. Yeah. So um, six. I'm hearing you, but I'm... right, right. I don't have much slides. So there's only two slides after this one. So, um, so the third thing is validation. So what validation means is you get letters of intent from actual customers who are going to commit to buying your product when it comes out. But people also get cash, and they actually get that in one weekend. That's unbelievable. Happens every time. And they don't even have a product. They don't even they have, have a product. an idea. They have an idea. Exactly. So these are it's unbelievable results. Uh, so that's the uh, overall pitch. And then finally, on Sunday night, you get to sit, stand in front, just like me, uh, pitch to judges panel. We have three judges. This year, we have someone, an executive from Advent Health. We have Ben Pass from D4 Capital, which is the most active VC in Florida, which is just about to raise a $100 million fund. Uh, and we have Curtis Michelson, who's also an entrepreneur. So you'll get questions and feedback from an active VC, uh, an executive, and an entrepreneur. All right, so here's the numbers. There's 23,000 teams that have been formed across the world. There's over 200,000. These are older numbers, by the way. 200,000 plus people have gone through this experience. 150 countries, 3,000 events. And we, as I mentioned, we won, Orlando teams won second again, uh, but we came first on 2018 as well. I don't know if you were part of that. You, you're connected yeah. with Gamer Gathering. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So Gamer Gatherings is the other team that came in 2018, also won the Global Challenge. So Orlando has won twice. We're doing something. What do they win? Like, apart from having a good idea, like, it's do mostly have, just they PR. Money no, or? there's no money. Uh, they could get money because, like the like well, I said, they, some judges are VCs, so you could raise money right there. Google um, offers, you know, uh, AWS time and work offered six months of space and things like that. But yes, yeah. yes, there are a bunch of community prizes. We're not allowed, based on TechStar rules, to actually give them money for winning. So you are allowed to give them in kind donations. So a lot of the sponsors, for example, I'll give consulting time and uh, Dennis. Uh, from his co-working space, gives co-working time, and so on. So there's a bunch of things that get you started, like you get a domain name and stuff like that. All right. Uh, there's been dozens of companies, by the way, that have come out of this that have actually made a uh, product and sold millions of dollars. This is why we would like you to participate. Uh, there's benefits and discounts, as I mentioned. You know, some of the products and free stuff that you get. You get one on one time with amazing mentors. Over sixteen of them are going to be there that weekend. Uh, you have a network, and this is really the key part. Not, I mean, there's so many side benefits to doing this. It's not even about just your startup idea. Like the people that you meet, it's one thing to meet people and shake their hand and say hi, I'm so and so, and do um, you know what are you doing and all that. It's a completely different thing to work side by side with them, shoulder to shoulder on an idea, and then you see how they work. And the relationships that are formed as you go through the fire, because believe me, it is fire. It is very intense. Mm -hmm. every, every, like I said, every time someone generates revenue, but every single time somebody cries. <laughs> this is not for the faint hearted. So you go in with the passion and you go in with the energy. And if you come in with the right attitude, there's just unbelievable amount of takeaways. So that's that. Of course, you have seven free meals. So we have dinner on Friday night, three meals on Saturday, three meals on Sunday, unlimited snacks t-shirt, lots of free swag. So the cost of this is $90, $99 at the moment, but there is a discount code. And I have these cards available for anybody who wants to take one. The discount code and the URL are on here. It's startupweekendorlando.com. It's actually next weekend, not this weekend, but the Friday after this one. All right, just one more slide and we're done. So these are some of our sponsors. We I've been organizing this since 2017. Actually started planning in 2016, so six years-ish. 
Orange County, Florida just gave us a grant. Uh, City of Orlando has given us a grant. Uh, Orlando Devs, D4 Capital, uh, as I mentioned, Lean Startup Orlando. Rollins is actually where the event is going to be at uh, the first day. And the Saturday, Sunday is going to be, uh, can you move that? Go over to the three dots on the board. High floating minerals. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. So Orlando Magic is also a sponsor. The UCF Center for Entrepreneurship is a sponsor as well, as well as Stacks. Okay, that's all I had. I'm happy to take as many questions as you'd like. Uh, uh, Sabi Prasad wanted to know, just, uh, do you have Web3 participants? Absolutely, we'd love to have Web3 participants. We can, you can pitch any idea at all. Mm -hmm. We had people pitch a cookie, uh, organic cookie idea, and they came, I think, third. So. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a crummy idea. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sleeping on the floor? She generated, she generated revenue that first weekend because she literally made cookies and went outside. And yeah. She, she was a hustler. Pretty and sweet. Are you sleeping on the floor or you go home? <laughs> you have both options. Well, actually, you can't sleep on the floor because uh, there are limits. There's little close of venue at 10 o'clock. But okay. you are welcome to go to another location and support people. Do. Yes, sir. How many people usually show up to this event? Between 80 to 120. Okay, let's say you're one of the participants. They don't pick your idea. Is there value in sticking around? Oh, yeah. Being part of the team? 99% yeah. value. You're not necessarily going to be part of the final team. You're just helping them with their team. Yes, but like I said, that's still 99% of the value. Sunira Madani did not get her idea picked. She achieved more success than anybody who actually won the event. So the value is in the innovation tools, the customer discovery, and the traction and the unbelievable progress if you would never have made that much progress in one weekend. I personally had, I was an entrepreneur for six years. I came to that weekend and I was blown away by how much you could achieve in one weekend. Uh, sure, let's go with our first. Well, I'm gonna say this is awesome. I've heard of it, like, like she said, I've never participated in it before. Um, it'd be helpful to have one of your slides that actually have the names of the companies and some of the logos and stuff, because you were saying them and I'm trying to look them up and find them, I can't find any of them. Sure. So, I mean, that would just help again for some of us who are visual learners and things that the names that have been up there or the logos, or the people's names you mentioned. Because sure. I was trying to look them up, I can't, couldn't find any of them. Just maybe I just misunderstood you as all, but yeah, no but that would have been helpful with your deck if it would have been fine. I understand. Thank you. Uh yes sir. Yeah, I have two questions. First one, um is this sort of form of um hackathon? It is comparable to a hackathon, but the difference is at the end of a hackathon, you're really working on a specific uh product, a piece of code that's going to actually function, whereas here we're working on customer discovery, the main focus is customer discovery. Second question is the, so, oh, okay, there is no infrastructure with the hackathon. So you don't need infrastructure, no, okay. just a laptop, you need to build slides, you need to build a clickable prototype and things like that. Okay. okay. Yeah. But this is one of the best experiences any entrepreneur can dream about. Okay. Really great Except when you're out on the street corner in 50 mile an hour rain <laughs> <laughs> trying to get validation for your idea. Like we did last year. Uh, Hustling, that's what it's about. Hustling. Yeah. Hey, if you got an umbrella, I can, yeah. uh, <laughs> can oh. I come with an existing product that I'm getting ready to launch. Thank you. That is a great question. And the answer is no, unfortunately. <laughs> so, because we want to have it as an even playing field. Yeah. Uh, but if, like I said, even if you're not pitching that particular idea, you can still get a lot of value from the experience working on a team that has a different idea. Uh, do the team members sign agreements before they work on the challenge? They do not. Thank you for that too, because that's another difference with some of the hackathons and you know things that happen out there is they're hosted by a, an enterprise which tends to own all the IP. This is completely open. So you can bring whatever idea, we don't enforce any rules, and we don't help you enforce any rules either. So your idea is on your own, uh, and you know how you work it out with your team members is on your own. But again, like I said, at the end of the day, you think the idea is the most important part, which is not. The learning that you're going to get from this experience is you're going to get the skills to take any idea from zero to sixty, right, in a weekend. And when you when you have that superpower, you don't care what idea it is. You can pick an idea that comes to you today, next week, next month, next year. You work on a co-founder with their idea. Point is, how do you take an idea from zero to 60? So, 
That's the big, big one. Yes, sir. Uh, so out of the 80 to 120 competitors you have, how many teams or how many uh, people do you actually have developing different products? Is that yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's a math thing. Uh, probably five to eight people on a team is what we shoot for. And so depending yeah. on the number of people, yeah, something. <laughs> Other questions? Okay. So it can be a business idea as long as it's not uh, like a, as long as it's not a registered business or what, what are the like, criteria? Good question. Yeah. Right? To be clear on what that means, it means pre-revenue. So if you have something that hasn't generated revenue yet, then it's still a valid idea, right? Because it's not a, it's not a revenue generating company, which means you already have customers. So the point of this experience is to have people on an even playing field. So if you had an idea that you've fluttered on for a while, but you haven't started generating revenue, you can still pitch it. Yeah. Two things we had a question online. Um, can you bring in existing team members? You can. Okay. Um, and then and then just a, a, a note, unfortunately, it was last night. Um, unfortunately for the people here, it was last night, but there was a a, a pre-event uh last evening um that uh Rizzi posted um at the incubator downtown. Um and in the future, pay attention to this because <laughs> it's an opportunity to get up and just pitch. We had some we had some good ideas. We had some pretty ridiculous ideas on purpose, and it's just an idea to uh, an opportunity. Um, the pre event you don't have another pre event. That was the last one. Yeah, we had one with Orlando Devs uh, at the Orlando Science Center, which had hundred plus people there. And yes, last night we had close to sixty. So yeah, those are the two pre events. Uh, but like I said, the good news is there's an event coming up. The final, the main event is next Friday. I'd love to have as many people here as possible show up for that because, like I said, this is not just for startup founders. If you're in an enterprise, if you're in any kind of business, whether you're a marketing person who's trying to do experiments and understand the customer better, whether you're in the technology piece or a field trying to do product development, it's still going to help you move your ideas forward faster. So I invite everybody to show up. Uh, but if this next weekend is not your thing, please get on the mailing list. Uh, we need, right now, if you go to startupweekendorlando.com, it's the ticketing page. But after next weekend, if you go there, it'll be a mailing list. So you can actually the names of those companies that have exited and all that will be on there. I've actually noticed that once I scrolled down on the uh, event rights page and I was able to see everybody because act spell was an X. I mean, again, I wouldn't have known that <laughs> without seeing yeah. it. Um, I'm going to be supposed to be working Friday if, if I got off and came at 11 or 12 or is that OK? Like, uh, Friday evening. So we start at 6 p.m. and we're going the whole weekend. So. I mean, if you want to observe it, that's a different thing, but I would really say if you want to get the experience, you have to be there the whole weekend. And it's really, you the, go. yeah, you have to really, it's about the commitment and that's what's going to give you the results. Like what you put in, what you get out, kind of the standard answer. Right? But yeah. Do you have to be 21? No, that's yeah. another great question. We've had people as young as 14. Wow. Uh, yeah. And that's another amazing part of this experience, which you'll never see anywhere. Like take a look around. What are the demographics of this group? Here, oh. right? <laughs> <laughs> that is not the case with startup. So. <laughs> we have 14 year old people, or we have one, I should say. I mean, we don't have that many, but we've had young people, we had teenagers uh, who are generally in that range. But the youngest we've had was a 14 year old girl who ended up being doing the final pitch for her team, uh, right next to an Accenture executive who's 50 years old on the same team. And then you had these Title I students who are coming from impoverished backgrounds, mm -hmm. working alongside these same teams. And the best part is because of the structure of the event and the way the teams are formed, anybody can go ask these questions. Like they can get, you know, someone else make the decision of what questions to ask, but the team can divide and conquer and everybody has stuff to do and they're all working really hard together. I picture this like being survivor or kind of like, uh, <laughs> what's that one where they run around the world? Yeah. And you're a team yeah. and it's, the goal it's is to race, get to the yeah. finish line regardless of whether you like somebody or you don't like somebody, the goal is the idea of executing all the way to the finish line. It's Absolutely. A, it's, it's an adventure. <laughs> it's a what? It's an adventure. What does that mean? What <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is very much uh, a fun experience. And uh, one of the things with that is the only difference there is it's while it's competitive, the vibe we try to create and we've generally been successful with it is there is no toxicity right. where everybody is supporting each other. So even if your team is, you know, competing with other teams. The point is that everybody is going to learn the same amount. And whether you win first, like there's no million dollar price. 
right? It's it's just recognition, but the value that you gave from Knowledge it, it's, still, it's still going to be great for everybody. Yeah, very good. All right, All right. Thank, thank you so much. All right, thank yes. you. All right. Next week, we're going to hear from Ben Woodson of Sovereign Ships which is a sustainable yacht company. Uh, so, yeah, that's cool. what it sounds like. So uh, we also have an opening for a second speaker. So if anybody would like to give a presentation about their company, uh, we would love to have you. So until then, uh, download the chat, join us on meetup.com, connect with somebody, go forth and do great things this week. Thank you very much. We'll see you all next week. Yeah.